This week, I'd like to talk to you about the health and fitness of the automotive industry. Last week, big week, exciting week for MTA Queensland and our broader industry members. We hosted our signature innovation event, Carmageddon. But this year, we focused on, yes, what's coming to impact on our industry, but more importantly, what will we look like in the future? That meant we had some fantastic sessions from leading dealers to talk about how will the dealership model evolve as the various issues impact on them, be that electric vehicles, uh, be that different sales models. We had service stations, a service station experts talk about how they're evolving with the impact of electrification and the challenges they face around the capacity of electrical networks. We heard from the panel and paint industry about how to make their industry more attractive in this ever competing labor market. Really, really exciting information. Most importantly, we also talked about policy and that's about we're hearing more and more from government particularly and policy makers about commitments for electric vehicles. A good example is the Australian Capital Territory Government has committed that, in fact, they've mandated that from 2030, you will not be able to buy new vehicles if they're combustion engines. Our industry has a significant problem with that. Last week, the entire industry, all of the associations across the, across the country, got together and established some key principles to help guide government in this decision-making. Because there's some realities here. Electric vehicles, yes, they're an important part of the recipe, but they're currently 2% of new vehicle sales. All of the predictions are by 2030, they might be somewhere in the range of 18 to 25% of vehicle sales. Yes, higher at the premium end in terms of percentage, lower at the volume end. But that still means by 2030, we can expect only about 8% of the vehicle fleet to be electric. So that tells us mandating will mean lots of consumers, there's still a big price parity between the vehicles, will hang on to their combustion engines. So what we as an industry do we think are the guiding principles? We are fundamentally committed to the electrification of our industry and will support government in that journey. But electrification does not only mean electric vehicles, there's plenty of ways to get there. We want governments nationally, or at least nationally consistent, to establish carbon emission targets for all new vehicles. That means electric vehicles will certainly play a part. That means hybrid vehicles, including plug-in hybrid vehicles, will play an important part, particularly in a nation like Australia. But it also means we can have manufacturers work on reducing emissions across the fleet so we continually improve. But we're also committed to maintaining our entire fleet. That means we want people to continue to buy combustion engines if it suits them. Sure, we want them to have better our carbon emission standards, no question about that. But we want to signal to you as an industry, we want our members to continue investing, continue recruiting, continue continuing to skill your people for combustion engines and diesel engines included in that as they evolve in te technology because it's a really important part. 2030, 92% of our fleet will still be combustion engines there'll be a long tail. So the future's really bright for our industry. If we're honest, if we're transparent, we continue to invest in, yes, new technology, but also the skills we need today. See you next week.